and welcome back for another episode of Let's Play Skyward Sword. I am Decepticon Rampage, and now it's time for the Wing Ceremony. Which should be kicking off here very shortly. Oh, oh hey, look who it is! Harsh on me. Uh, I'm wondering if it's if it's maybe just pure jealousy. And that and and his ruffled pompadour. <laughs> you know, if you're talking about a scrawny clown. That'd be like your <laughs> Groose's uh, tall, lanky uh, lackey over there. <laughs> I, 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 w I wouldn't call Link skinny. I mean, he, he seems like he's got a decent build. Seems kind of weird to... But, I mean, you know, this is Groose. He's not the best judge of <laughs> character or, you know the most intelligent guy around, so. <laughs> and honestly, you know, d does Gruus not notice that I have a sword strapped to my back? That maybe it wouldn't be a, the best idea to, you know, make rude and, you know, snide comments, and, uh, but whatever. Yeah, I will win. Because I am the best. How are the birds making jet trails in, in colored smoke? Let's see, do, the, do they have smoke pellets in the back? Doesn't, didn't look like it. <coughs> hey! Whatever, kind of, kind of strange, but you know, whatever. That's pretty cool. This guy's got a gold loft wing. Ba -ba -da -ba -da. Yep, yep. Nope, we got it. Mm. The loft wing's carrying a statue. Catch the bird. And grab the statue. Pretty simple. Oh, uh, and they also make a mention of it being the 25th anniversary of uh, the Academy. This game also came out on the 25th anniversary of the Zelda franchise. So, ni nice little nod there. I, I like it. And it's also, hey, no more naughty thoughts about my daughter. Hey. Okay, so I got on my bird first, and then I'm pretty sure I'm going to be like, yeah, way behind the pack here. Cut him off at the pass. Oh, he T-boned me. Wait, where'd they get the eggs from? Oh, there's eggs thrown up my face. Piece of cake. Oh 
yeah! Got the bird statue! I guess what it said it was a bird statuette. <laughs> Honestly, what is, the, what is the, the difference between a statue and a statuette? <laughs> she had a lot of confidence that we were able to catch her. It's, it's probably a good thing that that's not like a quick time event. It'd be like, press A to catch Zelda, and if, if you weren't paying attention, it's like, oh shit. <laughs> And then you have to do the whole race over again, and... Man, that'd be something, right? Glad they didn't do that, because I'm sure that would have happened at some point. In the many times I've played it. But seriously, if anyone knows what the actual difference between a statue versus a statuette is, I would like to know. Post a comment. If you, if you can explain what the difference is, other than it just being, like, the size, but that looked like a decent size statue. Oh, is she going to sing? Oh, Bow to the Goddess. I love this song. It's such, you know, so awesome. But, uh, yeah, as I was saying, um, I, the only thing I can think of is it's the, the difference between the two is simply just in regards to, um, the size, but I definitely have seen, I mean, I've, I've seen and owned things that are small statues, but they're referred to as a statue. Yeah, I got so cloth! I like that she calls him out on that. The, you know, well, it, it's it's a standard trope with the Zelda series. Whenever you get an item, you know that you have to hold it above your head, and uh, and it spins it spins in the air. You know, defies gravity and whatnot. Um, and I don't know. I lost my train of thought. Um, but you know, I I, I like it's kind of like a not quite fourth wall breaking, but you know, it's it's definitely one of those you know, it's a nice nice little nod to the fact. Um sure. Oh yeah, I bet I, I bet I can totally get the exact center. What what is it with Zelda and pushing me off of things? I mean, I guess I guess technically, if you lived in Skyloft and you had a bird that uh, uh well it wasn't quite the exact center, but it's close enough. That you, you probably wouldn't have a huge fear, fear of heights. Oh, hey, so you said it was perfect, so... I, I don't remember if her... Oh, whoops. Uh, I don't remember if her dialogue changes if... Um, unless you totally fail it, or if it's... Or if you don't hit roughly the center. If she says... Hey, that was good effort. I, sh I should have I checked, because... I, I, I knew she mentioned it was... I knew one of the things was she mentioned it was... You know, that was perfect. Yeah, we can go for a flight. And Zelda's got it, like, bad for Link in this. Which, it's, again, it's... I, I like that that's kind of the, the established point in this game. It's like, because you you almost, you know... They, they're, there's not really any, like, romance between the characters in a lot of the other games. 
one of the only things that actually had any kind of implied um, romance between the characters or that there was a an attraction of any kind um, is the only one I can really think of is uh, the, the cartoon the Legend of Zelda animated series you know the excuse me princess you know that, that whole deal um, everything else is always you know, Link's, Link's just the hero, and you know, he's just doing his thing. No, Zelda! It sucks for Zelda, you know, she has fallen down into the into the clouds. Now, my question I don't I don't know for sure if they've actually said in the game yet at this point. But there is there's like a barrier, the cloud barrier. Oh big monster. Um but yeah, there, there's this implication that there's a there's a barrier of clouds that separates oh. Skyloft from the surface world, uh, and no, but nobody in Skyloft has, has ever gone down to the surface because they can't. The but how how did Zelda get down there? I mean, what, is it just a case of? The, the dark tornado had had pierced through the barrier. Is it or is it a case of you can't go from you can't go from the top down, but you, but things can come up, you know, uh, from the surface. So the tornado, the black tornado, comes up and, and creates a hole in the barrier. Uh, I'm going to assume that that's the case. I can't remember if they ever actually state that, or if it's just imply, or if if it's just mentioned that that Zelda just you know awakens on the surface. So anyway, here here we are back in in the academy in our room, and you know, yeah, he seems pretty confident that that Zelda's going to be fine. Um, but that that little that dream we had was kind of weird, wasn't it? So let's investigate this. Hey, if there's anything new in my uh, cupboard, is there? Hey, more rupees. Spiffy. Ha Open the door, please. Thank you. Um. Hey, there's there's a a floaty person. This this segment will introduce us to the night cycle on loft on, uh, on loft sky loft that's what it's called um, and things are quite a bit different at night um, things like you cannot ride a loft wing uh, at night a lot most of the most of the areas are closed off and oh whoa that was close um, then there's one thing uh, right here that will it is a big difference between day and night 
And you got the, the cute little kitty. So adorable. Oh my god, it's a horrible monster! Why are you a horrible monster now? Get away, kitty. Bad kitty, go away. Okay, good, it ran away. I, I, I didn't want to have to hurt the kitty, but... It was, it was a dangerous, dangerous thing. Oh yeah, I want to drop down here. All right, so these the, these blob guys um, will actually uh, the bigger they if they're if they're larger then they will uh, eventually split and the, that's our first first piece of uh, collectibles um, the ones you get from monsters and whatnot those actually are used in uh, crafting which is actually a pretty deep system in this. Well, deep is probably the wrong word, but um, there's definitely a lot to it. A lot of collection and um, and whatnot. And I like that because it it does it, it definitely gives a sense of progression to a lot of the things that you get in the game, which is not always something that you have in a Zelda game, other than say like um, Zelda 2, in which you had an actual full-on progression system. Oop, there we go. Oh, oh no, my rupees! Aww. Oop. Hey, it's a recovery heart. It's a heart. All right, so we, uh, I didn't really get a bunch. I didn't really get to show that off before. But vines, just like on the on the side on the spots where you can uh, shimmy across, you can actually also leap up vines, which is which is convenient. But um, it basically just makes it all faster in general, because um, normally you can, um, you're going to basically use up the same level of stamina essentially whether you just climb or if you do the leap because it is going to use up a little bit more of that but you're going to go farther in the same span so pretty much all stays at the same ratio all right so huh. hey there's a there's a secret doorway and now we get our full introduction to um the companion character in the game. And honestly, I'm not for sure which which is the correct pronunciation of her name. Um, I mean, she's going to say it here in just a second. Um, okay, now, it's either Fi or Fi. I generally thought of it as Fi, but it could definitely be Fi. Actually, Fi would make more sense. Yeah, so... Irregardless of which which is the correct way to pronounce her name, I'm going with Fi. How about that? I'm saying it right here. I'll, I'll, I, there's a good chance I'll slip up at some point and say, and say Fi instead, but... I'm gonna go with Fi, because... That should be the way it's pronounced. <laughs> so, Zelda is alive, and didn't say she's well, but did say she's alive, so it's definitely definitely a plus. I mean, it, it, it could be a bad thing, but at the same time, at least we know... <laughs> she is li living and breathing, so... All right, let's go get a new sword. See, I. When it comes to motion control, 
I'm not going to bring this up a huge amount, but um, I like little little touches like that, where it's like, it, it's not it's not simply a case of go up and interact with it. It's actually you turn the Wii remote so it's so it's facing down, just like you would be grabbing the hilt. You know, press A, press and hold it, and then and and then pull it out of the out of its altar. I love that kind of stuff. Um, another another game that does. Um, motion control really fantastically, I think, is um, the third Metroid Prime game, uh, Corruption, which uh, recently has been made re-available um, on the Wii U eShop as the Metroid Prime Trilogy, which is which is fantastic all the way across. Um, even though there's no option to be able to play the first two titles without the motion control. The motion control in three was good enough, and then they re when they adapted that back for the first two. Honestly, I while I wouldn't say I completely preferred it, um, it definitely works uh, to the point where I don't really miss having the um, analog control, the aiming and everything in that works just fine and um, but a lot of the things you don't get so much of it in the first two games because they were designed with a GameCube controller in mind but the third game actually had little you know little things you did in the game that made it more interactive which I think is the main problem why so many people have issues with motion control in in a lot of games is because there's just a lot of play, a lot of games that never utilized it properly and it was it was subtle things just like pulling that sword out of the altar there's a sequence at the beginning of Metroid Prime 3 corruption where you have to um, use your communication system and you actually you know have to input the you know all of the um, all the information you uh, you know, actually you have you have to manipulate the controls of your ship uh, to do those things um, and then there's a thing in like the the very first mission where you have to rem like remove a um, like a power core of some sort and it actually there's actually a sequence where you have to like unlock it and then um, like turn the core pull it out you know and, and it's it's all little subtle things but as far as i'm concerned those are the kind of things that make motion control work well it's not you know granted your your actual gameplay is very important to make sure that you have that you have the the fundamental portions of the game for combat and whatever else done correctly but at the same time you need to also make sure that you have other little things that really show off you know uh, very small precise controls uh, that just give you an immersion into the world that's the whole thing that was that's I think was the reason why a lot of the motion control just kind of fell off. You know, um, I, I think a, a good example of, of that sort of thing done poorly um, was with, uh, what was it, the Steel Battalion game that came out for 360 for Connect <clears throat> that used a hybrid control system that, that took, where you used a controller and you did gesture control uh, using Connect, but it was terrible, and I think they tr were trying hard to establish that kind of thing, where you have all the, all these other these, where you, where you have to manipulate a lot of different things via motion control, and I think that that was part of the problem. Is it's not about making it complex; it's about it's about the subtle things that make it work. And again, you're making sure your fundamentals work. You have to make sure that those are the things that 
that can that can actually that actually do work properly to actually have those um, that kind of system work. Okay. Ooh. We're in it for the long haul. Yeah. Damn, this episode went way longer than I was planning, but so so much for my plan. But it, it, it's a Zelda game. There's there's going to be definite chunks where it's going to go for long periods of time without an easy place to stop somewhere. Um, yay, a uniform. But uh, anyway, on on I'm probably going to pretty much leave the motion control thing uh, at this point. But again, I f that, that's that's one of the things I really feel like. This game, uh, it did it really well. Okay, so at this point, we're going to go ahead and save and quit. Um, I want to thank you guys for watching this episode of Let's Play Skyward Sword, and I hope to see you on the next one as we gear up for our journey to the surface. So, again, thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye, guys.